Hey Talia, it's time for the chemotherapy again. Can you tell me your name and date of birth? Yeah, I, um, my, my name is Talia Ferrario and my date of birth is March 20, 2006. Oh, okay, thank you. Are you feeling anxious or any pain right now? I don't know, just the chemotherapy is so scary and it hurts. I don't know, I'm scared. You're scared? It's okay to have those feelings and concerns. I've tried to manage your pain with medications and other comfort measures. Do you think that's worked for you? They have, but it's still so painful and I hate the idea of just constantly taking meds. I wish there was something else I could do that to make my pain go away. Hmm. Hello fellow nurses, my patient struggles with pain and anxiety about her chemotherapy. I use the pain medications, provide comfort as best as possible, and try to soothe her stress, but I want to help more. Do you have any ideas what I can do? Have you heard about virtual reality? Yeah, I don't even know what that is. Well, you're in luck because I know all about it. Virtual reality is a computer technology that can be realistic or a fantasy. It takes place in a simulation and allows you to feel as if it were real life. It's typically known in the gaming world, but it is making its way into the healthcare system. There are so many uses for it, such as student or patient teaching, a way to practice medicine, or for your patient, a pain management technique. Um, a virtual simulation? What does that look like? VR uses a headset that allows the user to step out of their hospital room and into another world. They get fully immersed in the simulation and can have the ability to control what they see, where they go, and how they interact with what they're seeing. So it's like living in another world, like a step from reality? Well, that sounds like a dream. Exactly. From fantasy games to sports games, VR lets the patient take a break from their big hospital experience and transforms their patient care. VR will allow patients to de-stress by taking their minds off of their pain. VR would be a great addition to patient care for chronic diseases that bring long-term hospital stays. Giving patients this experience can decrease their pain and depression and stress, and it will also provide a great hospital experience. What are you waiting for? Can you get me one soon? A VR, please? Hold on a second. Bruh. I have to get more information on this thing. So nurses, in healthcare, there are different systems that produce and regulate technologies, such as the PIXs, online charting, and IV pumps. So are there multiple companies that produce the VR? Yeah. One system, called the Oculus Rift, is a top-rated VR system for home use. It also has the, the capacity to be used with the latest Samsung Galaxy smartphones, making a VR a possibility for almost everyone. Other systems let you use game controllers in addition to the headset to enhance your VR experience. The competition for VR is growing, and companies are constantly trying to improve their product to be the best. This gives patients the upper hand because they can choose from a myriad of VR experiences. I gotta warn you though, sometimes you'll get too immersed in the VR experience and that you'll forget your surroundings in real life. For example, let's take a look at this clip. Oh, oh it's me again. Oh, cool. The exorcism was worthless. Stay away, get out, must get out. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ah! What is wrong with you? Uh oh. Ah! What is wrong with you? <laughs> you really picked a creepy moment too. Uh, I'm like. Uh... Ooh, I'm really liking the sound of this. I want to know more, but I think I could use a refresher on like how pain pathways work to better understand how we could utilize VR. Oh no! Hey there, I can help with that. Huh? What's that voice coming from? <sighs> Oh goodness, technology is so hard to work with. Ah, okay, here you are. So pain signals are received via these things called nociceptors all over the body. And they are then sent to the central nervous system, the brain, mainly via C-fibers. 
So when we use pharmacological pain management techniques, such as opioids, they disrupt the C-fiber connection to the brain, and therefore the pain is not sensed the way it's supposed to. You can think of pain signals as the wires in your computer. So when you spill water or opioids on your computer or your central nervous system pathways, then the system malfunctions and it's not sensed the way that it's supposed to. So would it still help my patient even if it's not pharmacological? Using VR would be a distraction technique for pain management. I'll go in and create a distraction and you get the key. Oh, oh, wait, I want to do the distraction. Distraction as a means of non-pharmacological pain management works instead by altering the perception of the pain signals. everybody's attention? So with this technique, the pain is making its way all the way through the pathways into the brain. Nothing is stopping that. Instead, it's done by altering the attention of the patient. People have a very limited ability to focus on things. So if we draw this limited attention to a different area, such as a VR game or a different scenario, then the pain signals come in the brain at a slower pace. So they're still getting to the brain. But since the brain can only take in so many signals at a time, less of the pain signals can make their way in. VR can also help improve the overall health of the population it's being used for. People are more willing to comply with future procedures if the procedure is more tolerable the first time. If we help manage the pain to begin with, they are more likely to adhere to their regimen and continue their treatment more willingly. People can also deal with an increased pain load for a longer time period if they have adequate pain management. This can mean that patients decide to move forward with more diagnostic tests or continue treatments longer than normal because their pain level is now more manageable. This is what my patient needs! I love the idea of it being such a help to the community. Have you seen any specific case studies? Yes, I'll pass you on to Alyssa who can help tell you about some of this. Hey Johanna, one area we have seen VR research was in pain management for burn patients and wound patients. Patients with burn wounds reported significantly less pain when distracted with VR. Specifically, their pain decreased from 6.25 out of 10 to 4.5 out of 10. These patients went through a VR simulation while they were receiving their wound care and they rated it a 7.5 out of 10 for how fun it was. I feel like a dancer! Another study showed that adolescents who were going through wound care and VR simulation reported less pain than those who were pre-treated with analgesics. With these studies, VR supports nursing knowledge by allowing nurses to realize pain can be managed without consequences to the neurons in the brain, such as developing tolerance or negatively altering the brain chemistry. VR simulations have shown promising results on decreasing pain. So how does this enhance the quality of care for patients? VR can help enhance quality care by reaching a patient's desired pain level, reduce treatment length, and can also help as a distraction from a procedure. <laughs> One study showed that using VR as a pain management technique reduced pain levels, increased relaxation, and general comfort. In burn patients, it was reported that there was decreased pain and a greater range of motion. Along with being a distraction to reduce the amount of time thinking about the pain, it also reduces the perceived time spent in a medical procedure. Some other areas we see an increase in quality care is in decreasing anxiety and distress while increasing procedural corporation. In the pediatric world, we also see children being more complaint, compliant and calm, which leads to smoother interactions and less complex approaches. As patients reach a desired level of pain, we see an improvement in desired outcomes, thus increasing quality care. We also see treatment length shorten because it can reduce potential complications, so this could also lead to saving patients some money. Wow, I love that! It's also a non-invasive pain management technique. You mentioned saving money. Would you say using the VR can be cost-effective? There are many factors that consider VR as cost-effective. One area we see as cost-effective effective is that it saves money on travel for patients. A study found that 87.77% of total costs was travel for inpatient rehabilitation. Patients who use tele-rehabilitation can receive treatment from the comfort of their own home and save on travel expenses. 
Another way that it reduces the length of the stay in the hospital because the patient is more willing to go with the treatment regimens. When VR reduces the length of stay, which is related to less monitoring needed, it saves the patient and the hospital their money because it frees up another room, supplies, and nurses. We found that this statement from research from NPJ, among the subgroup of patients both eligible to receive and willing to use VR therapy, there was an average of um, $98.49 savings per patient. For patients who did not receive VR therapy, um, the hospital lost $16.90 per patient. That's good to know. So where would we use VR? In the patient's room? A dedicated room? Or could it be used at home? The great thing about VR is that it can be used practically anywhere, in patient rooms, OR or treatment rooms, and even in your home. It is currently being used for wound care, chemo, dentist visits, physical therapy, and other procedures. It doesn't have to be a major procedure to qualify either. It can be great for patients that are afraid of needles when having an IV placed, blood drawn, or an immunization. Well, you guys have been extremely helpful today. I gotta go back to my patient and see if this hospital has these accessibles. Did you find out anything? Yes, I found a pain management called virtual reality. It can manage your pain and it can manage your anxiety too. So let's try it out. Here you go. Whoa, this is so cool. Are you still feeling anxious, Talia? No, I'm feeling so much better already. Okay, while well, you have fun with that, um, I'll do this chemotherapy now and I'll be back to come check on you, okay? Okay, Talia, your treatment's done today. Let's get you rested. No way, I'm having a blast. I just wanna sit here all day and play. Woo! But wait, there's more. VR isn't just for improving pain. According to an article in the Journal of Advances in Medical Education and Professionalism, the most important use for virtual reality is in medical education. It can be used to teach medical professionals a new skill such as suturing and can provide a better understanding of human anatomy. If you act fast, you too can save $50 on your new medical grade VR headset. This technology decreases the frequency of training, meaning you can learn more faster. It increases accuracy and reduces errors. It increases student self-confidence, improves teamwork, and increases patient safety. Although VR can't replace practice with real patients, it is a great addition to a student's education. But it can be a little expensive. Requires skilled operator and supervision. Batteries not included.